Hello there, I'm Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, please like, subscribe and share if you like what you hear. Um, for my existing subscribers, just want to say thank you for your support. Um, I do tend to be a bit fluctuate with regard to my videos. Sometimes I'll do about three in a day. Sometimes I don't do any. It really depends on the vibe. Um, if I have anything to say, how passionate I am about expressing something, and that's how I roll. So for those of you who do want to not miss one of my videos, it is probably best to subscribe. You might be sitting for two or three days, you might be sitting for a couple of weeks, you might be sit sitting maybe, you might be sitting there too saying, bloody hell, is she coming out with another video already? It's too much. Anyway, um, now I've given you that little background. If you need any more information, please read below. And if you want to know what I do, a little bit about the background, or if you want me to discuss any topics. Um, now, we've had Brexit till we're coming out of our ears. And, you know, sometimes it sounds like people are kind of causing drama, um, being paranoid, and some people couldn't give two hoots what's happening when Brexit comes. I'm not quite sure um, what each of you, what category you fall in, but, you know, for me personally, I do not like to think that people are sitting around and thinking, oh yeah, everything will sort itself out. I would like to think that people have got a plan just in case it doesn't go the way they want it to. Now, I have a friend in America who I used to work with, and she sold her house. Um, she sold her house in the UK because she felt that after Brexit, house prices were going to go down. Now, is that, is that strategic thinking? Is that good planning? It, it probably is, because for the next five to ten years after Brexit, it's very, very likely that house prices will go down that people will be stuck with overextended mortgages and they might want to sell and they can't because they're not going to get their money back. Am I dramatising things? I really don't know. All I know is that history speaks for itself. Why does this always happen? Excuse me. I try to turn off my alarms. I try to do everything before I start a video. You can guarantee that there's something I've missed. Anyway, I hope it doesn't disturb the flow. It might disturb my flow because I forgot where I was. Anyway, we were talking about um, what plans people are making for Brexit and whether or not they should make any at all. And the thing is, is that you can sit back and think, oh, well, I'm just going to see what happens. I'm not bothered. Like one lady at work, I said to her, how do you feel about Brexit? She goes, I'm not bothered. I'm not going to panic about that. And then you have other people who think that if you're wise, you will prepare for the worst case scenario. And what would you do in a crisis? Just supposing Worst case scenario, 31st of October hits us. Um, we're told we're leaving Brexit without a deal. The country, well, not really this country, but all the other countries, because it's about other people. It's not about us. It's about other people panicking. Other people panic and think, oh, well, the UK is going to be out on a limb. We're not going to work. We're not going to work with them. They, they, they've got no stability. This is that. This is happening. That is happening. They're already saying we made a fool of ourselves because of this parliament thing and the yellow hammer and goodness knows what else. So they've lost faith in the UK. So if they lose faith in the UK, who are we going to be trading with? Who are we going to be working with? And what's going to happen? Do we have enough resources within the country that we don't have to rely so much on other people? Now, apparently they're telling us that we shouldn't worry too much about uh, medical supplies because the government sorted that out. But we do not know what's going to happen. And all this video is here to tell you is, I just realised. Yeah, anyway, 
It's that fire alarm. I just noticed the one down here is going off. I wonder if that's the one you've been talking about and I didn't realise. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about that now. So, um, so yeah, I've got a few things written down that it might be useful for you to take note, just in case. And you can, you know, you can take it with a pinch of salt or you can take me seriously. It all depends. Um, what I've mentioned is that we've got failed financial institutions that have collapsed. We've got governmental institutions wreaking havoc on family life. We've got rail losses because people can't afford to take the trains and then they're still hiking up the prices. We've got large companies that have closed down and laid off workers. Actually, 29 companies have failed and 1,071 stores have been affected. This is, this is as of August 2019. The thing that I don't understand with all these um, store closures, why w DWP is making claimants feel as though they are um, scroungers and giving them such a hard time when it's not their fault. The majority of them, it's not their fault. And yet they're made to feel so badly. I mean, did you hear about that um, autistic boy? He was dead for nine months. His decomposed body was found. And they reckon it's because DWP um, reduced the income, the money that they paid him. I don't know how true that is, but I'm going to put the link in. But that's what they're saying. And he's just, how can anybody, that is so sad. How can anybody be dead for nine months and nobody put, uh, puts a claim in for missing persons? And the only reason why they find him is because of the stench? How can that nine months you mean to say no parents, no siblings, no friends? That is so sad. And I bet that is the way of so many people. He wasn't an English person, so maybe he came here on his own. But it's the way of so many people who are isolated and who don't talk to people and who think that they can manage by themselves. So nobody knows when they go missing or when they die. Nine months. I think that's so tragic. They only found him yesterday. Um, yeah, I went a bit off course there. But, um, yeah, I was just saying, how are you managing your resources, money, purchases, needs versus wants? Um, if everything was taken away, what would you do? What plans would you have in place? Um, technically, we're all meant to have at least six months saved up. I'm still working at mine. Um, every time I get a few quid, it, I find something to spend it on. So I'm not very good. At, I'm not actually um, what they call following my own example, I should say. But yeah, I'm working there. I do save a little bit and I do try to be consistent. So um, there's also something they call seed killers. You know, sometimes some of us can have a dream. And you know, like, if everything was to go, then what would happen is you would be left with what um, society or whatever is available. And whatever is available might not be enough. So it's about what can you do yourself to maintain yourself and your family? other than rely on other people to give you a loaf of bread? Is there any way you can make money or m make sure you have food without relying on other people? That's basically what it is. And you do have people like seed killers who try to kill your dream, try to kill anything that you want to do, and you are unable to fulfill that dream and what might have given you um, that little heads up or that little bit um, above everybody else. I don't know if that makes sense, but anyway, I just put that note in there as a, I don't even know what it is. Uh, lots of people are not worried about Brexit. They're not panicking. Are they well off? Do they think they won't be affected? If they're not affected, a family member might be. 
given there might be limited medical supplies, food supplies, house price slump and more job losses. How are you preparing for the next five years? Because we know when we go into a recession, it usually lasts between five and ten years. Um, anyway, I'm going to give you seven ways to manage a crisis. Determine what you need, not what you want. That's the first thing. So when we're thinking about um, Brexit, you can wait until it comes or you can start thinking about it now. It's only next month. It's a bit too late to think about it now. But hopefully you've been putting stuff aside, cutting down on um, non-essentials. If you've got every kind of channel on your on your um, board, on your TV, hopefully you're cutting that down. Hopefully you're not going to buy a brand new phone. You, you're going to settle with your old one. You might not be decide to buy a brand new car. You might just keep the one you've got. It's just about being sensible at this time and not doing anything that is going to put you over the edge. God forbid, you know, they say tomorrow, okay, um, or, or, you know, you, everyone's lost their job. Something absolutely ridiculous. All I'm saying is prepare for the worst case scenario. So determine what you need, not what you want. Only acquire what you need. So you don't want all these extra clothes, extra food. Well, extra food is good, but no extra clothes, no super, anything that's superfluous to requirements because it's just going to bog you down. Um, don't live beyond your means. Like I said, you know, hold off the cars. You know, people have large cars. They run up their credit cards. Um, they upgrade to larger homes. They're buying expensive designer clothes. Some people are over generous because they're feeling as though they've got it right now. Um, they waste resources. Sometimes they spend all their money because they think, oh, well, I'm going to get paid next month. But remember when um, last Christmas, when all those people got shut down from the federal government in America and most of them were working from week to week. And what happened was, is that some of them, they, they couldn't pay their rent or anything because they was working week to week, week. And if they didn't get no money the following week, they were up the creek without a pedal. So, um, don't spend all your money. Don't think, don't guarantee your salary for the next month. Think about supposing I don't get my salary for the next month or two months. What am I going to do? Um, yes, yeah, so don't withdraw. Withdraw the unnecessary. That's what I was saying before. Identify what is necessary for you to live. Do an assessment on what you're paying for. Reevaluate your budget. That is why businesses are shutting down and getting rid of agency staff. Cut out subscriptions if you're signed on to all these different subscriptions. Get rid of a lot of your memberships that you don't really need. Insurances, do you need all of them? Probably need life insurance and contents insurance. But if you've got any superfluous insurance, just get rid of them. You don't need insurance for every single thing. Review people who you support. How old are they? Is there any way that they can support themselves? Just do a, like a little re-evaluation. Don't buy any new clothes for the next few months. Just um, wash the ones you have and make do. Um, delay major projects. I'm a fine one to talk. I just had a major project. Well, a um, pseudo major project. Um, but hopefully it won't put me back too much. And, it, you know, and I, it's hopefully it's an investment. But anyway, um, so put off new attics, new conservatory, going on a cruise, uh, major renovations, buying a new house and upgrading um, and value possessions. Value what you have now. If you've got a small home, just value it. Don't think, oh my God, I don't really like it. I want something bigger. Just be happy with what you've got for the time being. It's not the time to upgrade. Um, save money, preserve and conserve. Ch change your lifestyle. You know, this is a good time to kind of only buy the necessities, buy things that can last you a bit longer, like tinned foods. And yeah, for now, you can be buying your fresh meat and stuff, but also stock up on um, canned foods and tins of milk and long life milk and stuff like that. Um, things that have got kind of a long shelf life and just put them down just in case, because, you know, if. If, if food is scarce or stuff, everything goes up. Everything becomes more expensive. Like I said, I could be dramatising, but let's just pretend we're preparing for the worst case scenario. We're preparing for a crisis. It might not happen, 
but we're preparing and there's you've got no love loss even if it doesn't happen because it means you'll have money in the bank you will have a little extra food and whatever because you're only going to be building up on the essentials if you've got a dog try to get him or a dog or a cat try to get them used to eating less during the day so the food that you're buying for them doesn't cost you so much um put a hold on or pedicures and manicures and go to the hair salon try and be creative with yourself do it yourself i saw a video the other day where this girl she didn't have no arms and she was putting on her eyelashes herself she was doing her feet i mean not her uh, you know she wasn't doing her feet but she was putting on her eyelashes and you know she was doing her hair and I was just thinking to myself if she can do it anyone can do it you can save yourself 25 30 quid going to do your eyelashes just do it yourself buy a box 10 pounds you get about five in there job done um gym memberships can you work out at home can you run around a track or something instead of spending extra money on gym memberships it's about conserving your money and not spending on something you don't really need i feel sorry for those guys who are addicted to the gym and addicted to all those weights because they're not going to be able to give it up or if they do they're going to have much difficulty but they can buy something else something they can lift lift up the bloody chair or something save your money um i was listening to Miles Monroe and he recommended a book called The Automatic Millionaire which is about how to become a millionaire without feeling it um, he stops buying coffee like I don't know if this he's a he's from Bahamas so I think this is in America where they all buy coffee and they buy stuff in the morning and their donuts and it costs them about like ten dollars and what he's saying is instead of buying that coffee um, just put that money into some kind of a saving tin and every day you know he said you'll be surprised how much you save by the end of the year um give with discretion yes if you're going to give money be dis you know use your discretion don't go overboard you don't have to impress anybody just give a moderate sum show willing and that's all if they ask you um is there anything that you have any talent what is your seed what seed is built in you that you can grow from because we all have seeds within us and so we have to nurture that seed and make sure it grows into something so we don't need to rely on other people we were all born to be self-sufficient no we're born to be self-sufficient and so we would not have to live off of other people but because of greed and goodness knows what else and we're just not satisfied with what we have we end up giving ourselves up to the other person to the system so just kind of analyze what can you do what can you offer so apologies about the alarm i literally have just started hearing it you won't believe that but i literally have and now i've heard it i'm going to keep hearing it so i've got to do something about it but anyway put that aside um so whatever you have just try to um whatever gifts you have just see what you can do start from now think about ways you can make money you know start using ideas think about you know because a lot of times people are going to start needing services and when times are hard it's going to be more important to have something that what people want so start thinking from now what might people want if everything goes tits up what might they want start thinking from now and that would bring you some income that might give you um, your the food that you might need at that time things like that um, basically all we need is food and water but even that that can be hard to come by when things get rough I'm not saying it's gonna get rough I'm just saying worst case scenario you don't know it's best to have a mind of preparedness than to be caught short and think oh my god if only I had known I would have done this I would have done that and then it's too late um, just to give you um, an idea of what's been happening um, the companies that have been failing so you can get an idea of why there is so much poverty why there's so many people out of jobs why brexit is just gonna be the nail in the coffin um, 2009 August to, to, to August 2019, 29 store, stores affected, 1,071 companies, 35,144 staff. 
2018, the last 12 months of 2018, 43 stores closed down. Um, 2059, no, companies failing. 43 companies failed. 2,594 stores were affected, resulting in 46,014. So that's just in two years, that's 80,000 staff without jobs. And DWP's got the nerve to give us a hard time. Well, not us, but, you know, people who are on universal credit or who are claiming benefits, they're giving them a hard time. Um, in 2017, the 12, last 12 months of 2017, 44 companies failed. Um, stores, 1,383 were affected. 12,225 12, staff lost their jobs. 2016, the 12 months in 2016, 30 um, com companies failed, 1,504 stores were affected, 26,110 employees were affected. 2015, 25 companies failed, 728 stores affected, 6,845 employees were affected. 2014, for those 12 months, 43 companies failed. 1,314 stores were affected. 12,335 employees were affected. In 2013, I'm going to go up to 2012. 2013, 49 companies failed. 2,500 companies or stores were affected and 25,140 employees were affected. 2012, 12 months, 54 companies failed, 3,951 stores were affected, 48,142 staff were affected. Let me just do it to 2010. Um, 2011, 31 companies failed, 2,469 2, stores were affected, 24,025 employees were affected. In 2010, for those 12 months, 26 companies failed, 944 stores were um, affected and 10,930 employees. So you can see what's happening. So I just I just want to put you on the alert. It's not no fun, and this has been going on since 2007. I just didn't want to go all the way down. Um, and we know that uh, the money shop failed, bath, bath store, Debenham, Select, HMV, Blue Ink, Burkatex, Post, House of Fraser, Claire's, not Claire's accessories, but the mother, the mother company, the parent company, Toys R Us, Maplin. Yeah, we've all seen all of those stores closed down. There's lots more, but I just wrote out those because those were the ones that are most um, popular. Um, so men were meant to have dominion over the earth, seed bearing, fruit, water, vegetables, meat, fish. We didn't need anything. But we're now we're in an age of experimentation and everything's going tits up because they're experimenting with everything. And it's just messing up the food, put colouring in the food. I mean, we can't even eat food and fruits without wondering whether or not it's got pesticides or colouring in it. So, you know, what was meant to give us, you know, what we were meant to be able to eat freely and plentiful. We can't do that anymore. Um... Brexit claim we could keep billions that we were paying to Europe. And they reckon if you got rid of immigrants who were using up the resources. But, you know, it's just greed. It's just they just want to get more money at our expense. That's all it's about. And instead, all we get is new taxes, low emission zone tax that's coming out very soon. Penalties, fines and san sanctions. Um, so yeah, just kind of think about what you can do, worst case scenario, to make yourself Brexit proof. 
And that's all I've got to say, really. Your comments would be appreciated. Call me a drama king, drama queen, tell me to change my battery, or you can talk about what I've been talking about in this video. That's all for now. Bye-bye.